Okay, back okay, in. I see you. I see a red still screen. Able to with see a my white, screen. Yeah, I see a red screen with like a white, almost like a you know, like a you know, the refresh rate scrolling across, but I don't see. I do not see an image. I see a maroon screen. Okay, I will. What I will do is I'm recording now, and give me a second to make sure that the recorder is picking up what I'm showing on the screen. So give me a moment. As I click here, and I hate the fact that it's downloading this to my computer because I didn't want to, but mine is showing. Uh, I have to wait for it to show up because I'm looking at the last video made. So with that being said, I'm seeing my screen on my screen, so I will go ahead okay. and talk, and you just follow along. I will, yes. The amendment. This is the amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. This is March 9, 1930. Done. In fact, I'm going to show you where it even says the New Deal. I want to know, so far as I'm concerned, that this bill represents the ideas of the new administration, the New Deal. Now, after I show you that, then I'm going to show you how the bill that they're introducing, the third section, gives supreme authority, or the second section, sorry, the other gives supreme authority to the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States to impound all the gold in the United States in the hand of individuals. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a violation of the takings clause because no property may be taken for public use. Without the government was using it for public use, I'll show that in a minute, without just compensation. Just compensation was... They were supposed to take care of our necessities because the gold was the money. Sure, gold coins, ability, nothing but gold the, coins and silver. Yeah, shall be lawful. No, 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 don't do that. States. You're about to do the you're about to do the YouTube video. Uh, don't do YouTube. that. It wasn't our ability to do anything. Don't do that. No, I mean pay. It was, it was the way we paid. They took away our ability to pay. No, 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 no. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was the money. They should coin nothing but money in uh, gold and okay. silver. They took the yeah. gold. Has nothing to do money. with your ability to pay. Had everything to do with your ability to provide for your necessities. Stick within the right. law, the wording of the law. As long okay. as you deal with how they worded it, then you're fine. But when you say they took away this and they took away that, they didn't take away anything. They okay. prohibited you by taking your property for public use, and they didn't give you consideration. You gave them value. They are supposed to give you consideration. So I'm about to show yeah. it to you. So just give me a second yeah. to explain. Sure. All right. In the hands of individuals. And then it says the next section, the last section of the bill provides for the issuance of a new money. See, they took away the gold. Now they had to introduce a new money because they took away your money. This was the consideration. They were going to introduce a new money. Yes. So what was this new money? Well, let's let them explain. He says, to understand just how this new money is to be handled, I refer to Section 401, which reads, upon deposit of the Treasury to the Treasury of the United States of all contract obligation of the United States or any note. Now, he's saying Section 401. So on the video, I'm going up to Section 401. Section 401 is just a short section. It's on the very first page at the very bottom, and it's in orange and green. Section 401 of Title IV of the Federal Reserve Act, the sixth paragraph of Section 18 of the Federal Reserve Act, is amended to read as follows. Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of any obligations of the United States, well, they further explain that the obligations are contractual obligations of the United States, or of any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances acquired under the provisions of this act, any Federal Reserve Bank making a deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled to receive from the Comptroller of the Currency circulating notes in blank, duly registered and countersigned. However, I'm showing on the screen, it is, sorry, 238. Uh, 59 stat 238, 59 stat 238, 59 stat 238 is the June 12th and 13, 1945 Act, 
or the June 12, 1945 Act. Section number three says, all the power and authority with respect to the issuance of circulating notes, known as Federal Reserve Bank notes, pursuant to the sixth paragraph of Section 18 of the Federal Reserve Act, as amended by Section 401 of the Act, approved March 9, 1933, 48 Stat 1, 6, shall cease and terminate the day of the enactment of this Act. Oh, really? So no more, pay attention, no more Federal Reserve Bank notes. So what were they using now? Well, at this point, they were using United States notes. At this point, they're using United States notes, and then later, they went straight to Federal Reserve notes. But they were no longer using circulating notes or Federal Reserve bank notes. See, here it is right here. The said Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System may at any time call upon the Federal Reserve Bank for additional security to protect the Federal Reserve notes issue to it. So Federal Reserve notes replace the Federal Reserve Bank notes. So we have that we can now get back to the New Deal because that was the amendment in 1945. Let's get back to this lawful money, this new money that Congress is lawful because Congress authorized the issuance of a new money. And I'll read that section again. The last section of the bill provides for the issuance of a new money. Well, now let's find out what this new money is. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as the security and gold for Federal Reserve notes are placed in the hand of Federal Reserve agent. Then he says they needed to know what was backing this new Federal Reserve uh, note and this new money because the new money was not the Federal Reserve notes. So let's find out what the new money was. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as security and gold so the new money was now the new gold because they took the old gold away. So now they created a new gold because the Constitution had never changed it. They just redefined what gold was. Are you understanding so far? Hello. Uh-oh, I can't hear you. Oh, I hit mute by mistake. My apologies. Yes, of sir, course I you did. Time. Got me talking to myself. You. I, no, I'm listening. I've heard everything you said. I've listened to it. It makes total sense. It makes total sense. So basically, they okay, redefined so, money. They changed it from circulating notes to Federal Reserve notes, and now they're they're basically they have redefined what it is. What gold is? Remember, circulating notes were yes. not gold. Circulating no, they, notes was just the script that the banks used between each other. So that's it. what the banks used to trade amongst each other. But mm -hmm. with the people, they were using gold coin, silver coin at that time. But now they, because con the Constitution says Congress shall make, make nothing but silver and gold as money, coin yes. nothing but silver and gold as mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. they now took all of the gold and now they said, pay attention, under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as security and gold or reserve notes are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent. So now the people get to deposit the new money, the new gold, mm -hmm. as money. So what's the new gold? Well, let them explain it. Uh, Mr. Stiegel of the Glass-Steagall Act and the other acts with his name on it, he says mm -hmm. the provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve bank notes. Now, not no longer Federal Reserve bank notes, now Federal Reserve notes and not Federal Reserve notes. And the security back of it is the obligation, contractual obligations of the United States, says it right there above, contractual obligations, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, as outlined in the section the gentleman has referenced. What section did he reference? Section 401. What are the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances? That's the new gold. That's the new money. The issuance of a new money was your notes for your necessities. Mm. Okay. You are doing business, banking business, because the law yes. requires that if you're doing banking business that you deposit this gold and silver with the banking institution. Now, I'm about to read that now. That's that very same thing that got rid of the gold act. I mean, uh, got rid of the Federal Reserve circulating notes. 
Mm-hmm. Well, now I'm about to read the section just above that, that literally you can find a codification. Don't go by the codification. The codification is not law. Got it. This is the actual law. This is the statute at large. This okay. is section two of the 59 stat 237. And the document is entitled 59 stat 237, subsection number two. Subsection number two says the second paragraph of section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act, which is section 412, the first paragraph is section 411, is amended and is amended to read as follows. Any Federal Reserve Bank, because if you look at section 201 of the Federal Reserve Act, let me make sure, 222, 220 of the Federal Reserve Act, but section two of the actual Federal Reserve Act, but section 201, section 220, I believe it's 201 or 220 of the code. But we're gonna focus on the actual statute at large. So we're gonna focus on the Federal Reserve Act. If you go to section one and two of the Federal Reserve Act, it defines a Federal Reserve Bank. And it says it's a Federal Reserve Bank when it's specifically referred to. So if it says the Federal Reserve Bank, the National Bank, the membered bank, it's talking about the Federal Reserve Bank. But if it's not specific, such if it says a Federal Reserve Bank or any Federal Reserve Bank, that's not specific because it's not speaking of a specific Federal Reserve Bank. It is general. Whenever it refers to the Federal Reserve Bank, generally, the law says that it applies to any bank. Well, the Check 21 Act of 2003 says any engaged in banking business, you are considered a bank. Presidential Mm -hmm. Proclamation 2039 says a banking institution means anyone engaged in the business of banking. So any Federal Reserve Bank may make an application to the local Federal Reserve agent. That is Federal Reserve Operating Circular 10, Appendix Number 3. You'll see it actually says application. It's it's a four-component application. Uh, For such amount of Federal Reserve notes as provided for as it may require. The section it says here and before is section 411, where it says that it should be exchanged in lawful money and blah, blah, blah. That's the section it's referencing, but we don't care about section 411. We care about the issuance of Federal Reserve notes. Such application shall be accompanied with a tender to the local Federal Reserve agent of collateral in an amount equal to the sum of Federal Reserve notes that's applied for and issued pursuant to such application. When you go to a bank and you apply for a loan and they tell you you've been approved, then that means you're supposed to get Federal Reserve notes. Now, this is what it says. It says the collateral security or the money that's offered shall be notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances acquired under the provisions of the Act. Just that simple. Well, then the government made an agreement with you. Now, we're not going to go farther. I'm going to read one other thing. I got to find it. Would you remind me the the name of the provision of 1903? So I can look that up, please. Could you remind me the name of that circular, please? Federal Reserve Operating Circular Number 10, Appendix Number 3. You should be watching the videos because I've done so much talking on that junk. But you look at Appendix Number 3. You go directly to appendix number three, read the first page. The borrower applies for Federal Reserve notes. That's the section for which the borrower is operating off of. Got it. Okay. This is the game. Sure. Give me a second. I have to open up the other document. Now, I'm not going to be able to stay too long because I have been doing it all day. Sure. sure. Literally all day. Okay. I have a little more information for you also. Based on what we had discussed. 59 stat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me one second. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sure. trying to focus on something. I have to get you the other sure. act. Okay, May. May 12th. The act of May 12th, 1933. It says necessities of life. All of this goes hand in hand. This is part of the, the new deal. But I want you to pay attention to necessities of life. You see, when they took away your ability to pay things in gold coin or silver coin as Congress shall coin nothing but gold and silver as money in the United States. 
they took away your ability to provide for your necessities. So let's make sure that there was consideration when they took away that ability because nobody's property, no matter what the property is, tangible or intangible, may be taken without just compensation. But it makes, remember the caveat is, may be taken for public use without just compensation. So give me a second while this document pulls up on my computer because it does take a minute because of how thick it is. But it is the May 12, 1933 Act, otherwise known as the Federal Emergency Act. It's called the uh, Federal Emergency Relief Act of 1933. I watched that video. Okay. I have watched that one. Well, what I'm about to read, well, I'm going a little bit more detailed now, and I am recording this. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled that the Congress hereby declares that the present economic depression has created a serious emergency due to the widespread unemployment and increasing inadequacy of the state and local relief fund resulting in the existing or threatened deprivation of a considerable number of families and individuals of the necessities of life and making it imperative for the federal government to cooperate more effectively. Got to remember that word imperative. It's imperative. Why is it imperative for government to do this? Because With the several states and territories in the District of Columbia in furnishing relief of their needy and distressed people. First time it says necessities of life. We're going to go to the second time. It mentions necessities of life. I think it's the next section. Give me a second to get to the next section where it mentions necessities of life. And normally I do a search for it, but I believe it's this page here. And I will find it in a second. I think it's this paragraph right here. Okay, I'm looking for unemployment. That's what I'm looking for. Say, and out of the funds of the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, now called something else, made available by this act, the administrator is authorized to make grants to the several states to aid in the meeting of all costs of furnishing relief and work relief and in relieving the hardships and suffering caused by unemployment in the form of money, service, material, and or commodities to provide the necessities of life to persons in need. Well, what qualifies you as having a need? If you can't provide for your necessities, you qualify as having a need. As a result of the present emergency and or to their dependents, whether resident, transient, or homeless. Well, I'm a dependent of a person who was part of this agreement. My grandmother on my mother's side. My grandfather on my mother's side. My grandfather on my mother's side. My grandmother on my father's side. So both sets of parents, their parents, my mother and my father, and I'm a descendant. This is my inheritance. They said, and or their dependents, whether resident, transient, or homeless. Well, I'm a dependent. Doesn't matter if I'm a resident. As long as I'm a dependent, I qualify. As long as I'm a dependent, I could be a transient, I could be homeless, but this act applies. Now, here's the thing. This act has never been repealed. This act has never ended because the emergency for which they said was absolutely necessary and ongoing right here at the beginning, it said, declares that the present economic depression has created a serious emergency. The emergency is ongoing. We know it because the New Deal is still in effect. The Trading with the Enemy Act is still in effect. The Federal Emergency Relief Act is still in effect. So with that being the case, it is FEMA now. Don't tell nobody. You have to do your research on that. It gives you the names of all the corporations. You can find that many of these responsibilities were transferred to other agencies. But here's the thing that you need to pay attention to. If they did this because of the emergency and it was imperative upon them at that time, that means it still remains imperative. 
doesn't need Congress to find it because as Congress found it was imperative because Congress had an obligation. Congress had to take for the necessities of people's life because they took away the ability of the people to take care of their own necessities when they took money out of the system and reclassified what gold was. See, mm -hmm. they still it's still gold. You have gold plated, golden like golden, you know, yeah. um, you have all kind of adjectives to describe gold. You have all kind of synonyms to describe gold. Got you. Okay. Crappy. So Crappy. they just redefined what gold was. Go ahead. I know. I just said it's very crappy. <laughs> well, get them for breach of contract because they haven't provided for your necessities. You're yeah, having not. to struggle to provide for your necessities. Okay, you're not supposed to be struggling to provide for your necessities because you're supposed to be able to have the ability of providing for your own necessities. Yeah. And you yeah, can't. Like, Why? Because they have taken that ability away from you. Go ahead. Yes. Is that what this whole process like the OID is for? Is basically for recouping expenses for necessities? Technically, that's the why OID they... is for this, but I don't want you to do that. I just want you to go ahead and understand they have an obligation. The OID has nothing to do with this, even though technically it does, has nothing to do with this because that wasn't part of the agreement. The OID was not part of the agreement. Gotcha. Government was supposed to take care of your necessities. So go and get them for breach of agreement. What does that look like in real terms? What happens when you do? Uh, I can't tell you exactly how to do it because I'm just telling people that that's exactly what I'm getting ready to do. But I'm doing it for a group, and I can't okay. tell you until after it's filed where to go and do it because there is a place that you can do it that it's it's even on a so-called state level, and it will be 100% lawful because there's nothing they can do to get around it. You feel me? Yes. Yeah, it's it's part it's, – okay. it's passed by Congress. It's, it's, it's the law they have to follow. Now, here's the thing. Why do you owe any of these companies when you've already provided them the gold? I should. They asked all for money. You gave, gave them money. They did not accept the your States. money. No. They didn't. Well, don't do that. Don't do that because it doesn't say that. Don't do that. Go according to the act. What does the gotcha. act say is the obligation of the United States? Gotcha. Provide for the necessities of life. The necessities of life. Notes, the drafts, cash? bills of exchange, bank acceptances, trade acceptances. So you gave a promissory note, even to the credit card company. That's a promissory note. Yep. That means yep. that the Federal Reserve is obligated. You got to understand the act. Use the act because it's still in force to this day. Use the act to hammer them to the wall. And when they say, well, no, I don't see. I don't care what you see. This is what Congress wrote. Here's the congressional record. Here's the statute at large. Here's the act of Congress. Here's the presidential proclamation. I don't care what you don't see. This is what the law says. It doesn't need your vision. It needs you to follow the letter of the law. Judges will always tell you what they don't see. Nobody's asking for your, your insight. Nobody's asking your vision. Nobody's asking to know if you are 2020 or not. You have to follow the law as written. Well, statute at large, acts of Congress, the Constitution, and you bring up the Constitution. You don't have to bring up that. You bring up the Fifth Amendment. You bring up the right to be securing your property, that they violated that, that they violated my rights. This is a breach of contract. I have the right to be secure in my possessions, my person, my property. This was my inheritance that you guys took away from my grandparents. You took away from my parents. You took away our ability to prosper in this wonderful nation known as the United States. And then after you took that away, then you denied me the right of access. Well, I'm saying, no, you don't have my permission to kick me out of my own country yep. through your so-called programs because that's what they've done, quite literally. That's what they've done. They've literally kicked you out. Yeah. Okay, now do me a favor. I'm going to ask you for something, and I need you to understand. I think that it will do exactly what I've been planning on doing. I'm going to stop the video. And I want to play this on YouTube for everybody to hear what I just said, because this is what I've been trying to say to people. 